Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Thursday, December 7th. Jaguars at Browns in Week 14. We're previewing that football game right now. The Browns are favored by three points at home, despite being losers of two straight at the hands of the Rams and the Broncos. The Jaguars are obviously coming off of a devastating Monday night loss to the Bengals in which they lost more than just the game, had some significant injuries that they suffered in that one. The Jaguars, though, they are still atop the AFC South at 8-4. and four. Texans and Colts are 7-5. and five. So regardless of the results in Week 14, the Jaguars will still be in first place in the AFC South because they hold the tiebreaker. So even if all... All three of these teams are 8-5 and five following Week 14. The Jaguars will still have the tiebreaker. They still will be in first place. That being said, I don't think you want to go into Week 15 against the Ravens on Sunday Night Football at home with all these injury concerns needing to stay atop the division. Maybe you do. Who knows? I mean, backs against the wall, that can help teams play at a higher level. The Texans, though, they play the Jets and Titans the next couple weeks. Obviously, they're going to be favored in those games. The Colts play the Bengals and Steelers, a little bit of a tougher slate for them. But the Jaguars, they are going to want to win this football game, get the stink off of them from Monday Night Football. These two teams, the Jaguars and the Browns, their injury reports could make up an entire game day roster almost. It is insane how many injuries these two teams have right now. Obviously, a lot of these players will end up being able to play on Sunday, but for the Jags, the top question marks are Trevor Lawrence with the ankle, who did walk out and do a press conference yesterday with no boot on. He was looking fairly healthy. He said that if he can be out there and be close to himself, close to 100%, and be able to play the way he wants to play, he's going to be out there. He said he's made significant progress. He's happy with the progress and surprised with the progress of that ankle since Monday Night Football. Walker Little's dealing with a hamstring injury. He's your starting left tackle right now with Cam Robinson out with the knee. So that's something to keep an eye on. Obviously, Blake Hance will likely fill in for him if Walker Little is unable to go. Tyson Campbell's dealing with a quad, starting outside cornerback. He's been dealing with injuries most of this year. Buster Brown has filled in for him admirably. You'll probably see Buster Brown on the game day roster, regardless of if Tyson Campbell plays or not this week. And then Trey Herndon, he is in concussion protocol. You're hoping that your starting nickel can get back for this big game for the Jaguars, trying to get to... 9-4 9-4 and four on the year. For the Browns, Amari Cooper, their best wide receiver, Kareem Hunt, running back Juan Thornhill, safety, Maurice Hurst, and Denzel Ward, their best corner, trying to work his way back from injury. Those are the top guys on their injury report. We know Nick Chubb and Deshaun Watson are out for the year, two of their best offensive players. Uh, you know, Deshaun Watson, their quarterback, Nick Chubb, their running back. Dorian Thompson Robinson, the rookie out of UCLA, he's technically their starter with Watson out. But he's going through concussion protocol. He missed last week. Joe Flacco started, so you don't know who you're going to see this week against the Cleveland Browns. And you'll have two vastly different offenses based on who is behind center, two different skill sets for those quarterbacks. So the Jaguars, they're going to have their work cut out for them preparing for this football game. The Jaguars offense, we know they will be without Christian Kirk for at least the rest of the regular season, dealing with the core muscle injury that requires surgery. Parker Washington will be filling him filling in for him. He performed admirably on Monday Night Football, was not perfect, but uh, overall I think that he did a heck of a job uh, filling in for Christian Kirk during that game, even bailed out Trevor Lawrence in the end zone with a big-time touchdown grab. We all know what the biggest question is, though. Can Trevor Lawrence play? If he can, the Jaguars should probably be favored in this game. They're undefeated on the road this year. Lawrence is tough as nails. He is a gamer. You saw him come back from a big-time MCL sprain and play in four days on Thursday night football after a game on Sunday. So this is a guy that we know can come back and and kind of have seemingly miraculous recoveries and get out there and play football and play at a fairly high level. He did really well on the road Thursday night football against the New Orleans Saints. Now, if C.J. Beathard, their backup, is forced to play, you're going to see a lot of short stuff, screens, etc., which you see a lot from the Jaguars anyways. He will take some shots downfield. He does like to do that. You saw that when he filled in for Trevor Lawrence this past week at the end of the game. But otherwise, again, it's going to be a lot of short stuff. I think you'll see a lot of motion, play action, all that stuff, all the bells and whistles to try to make sure the Jaguars are giving him an opportunity to perform and score some points. The Browns, though, defensively, they do present some interesting issues Jim Swartz, their defensive coordinator, he wants his D-line to get upfield aggressively, usually a four-man rush. 
So if the Jaguars can win one-on-ones against checks notes, Miles Garrett, they'll be fine. No, I think that the Jaguars will be rolling plays away from Garrett's side. I think they will be using chips to slow him down. Still might not work because Miles Garrett is perhaps the best pass rusher in football, certainly up there, and they have a talented defensive line across the board. So it's going to be tough sledding for the Jaguars offense dealing with that uh, dealing with that defensive line in Cleveland. And the Browns, they have a talented secondary, talented linebackers, especially you know talking about the secondary. If Denzel Ward can get back, if Juan Thornhill can go, uh, they have one of the better secondaries in football. The last two teams that have beaten the Browns in consecutive weeks – They've really run the ball quite a bit, which makes sense against a team in the Browns that wants their D-line to get upfield aggressively. But right now, the Jaguars, quite frankly, they suck at running the ball in between the tackles. Yeah, you can get outside and, and gain some yards. Yeah, you've seen some chunk plays here and there. But overall, it has not been pretty for the Jaguars running the football, especially in short yardage. Either way, though, if you're running the ball or using screens, quick plays, I think you're trying to use the Browns' defensive front's aggressiveness against them. I think that's got to be key for this game plan for the Jaguars. The Jaguars' defense, they might not know who they're preparing for, as I mentioned, which can be worrisome because they knew who they were preparing for last week, and they still got absolutely roasted uh, by by the Cincinnati Bengals and uh, by Jake Browning. But if they just get back to basics for me, stopping the run, you know, tackling, forcing third down, you know, third and medium, third and long, they should be in a much better place. Now. Looking at these quarterbacks a little bit, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, he can run and make plays. He can make pretty much every throw, but he is going to be a little inconsistent. He is going to put the ball in harm's way sometimes. Joe Flacco, he is not going to be running very much, but he can absolutely air it out. Last week when he was playing quarterback for the Browns, they took a ton of shots down the field. So you're going to basically have two different game plans based on who you're playing against at quarterback. Uh, But the Browns, this is a team that wants to run the football. They do it very well. They kind of Kevin Stefanski has a lot of influences on his offense, but uh, I think you see a lot of the outside zone. Jerome Ford, a talented runner. Kareem Hunt, if he can play a talented runner. You've got to be more disciplined this week in coverage, not only you know as a run defense, tackling and pursuing, but in coverage as well. They, they were just getting cut up by tight ends over the middle of the field. They couldn't cover Jamar Chase. They couldn't cover T. Higgins. I think the Jaguars just got to hit, hit the reset button. And quite frankly, I think if the Jaguars' defense does not show up, you can start looking at them as pretenders. Because this is a game they should absolutely be able to slow down the Cleveland Browns You know, without Deshaun Watson, Nick Chubb. Amari Cooper might not be available to play. We'll see his status moving forward through the week. But this is a game the Jaguars defense needs to show up for they didn't show up against a Bengals team that they should have last week they've got to show up this week otherwise I think you really are starting to look at a group that might be pretenders special teams has to come to play as well Logan Cook did not have his best week last week Brandon McManus missed a field goal that would have potentially won the game for the Jaguars in the fourth quarter Parker Washington he muffed a punt was able to recover it did have a nice kick return but overall these these players these key special teamers have got to play better football this week. And the coverage units have to show up. They almost always do. So I'm not super concerned about that. But special teams has got to be better than it was in week 13. Look, this might be an old school nasty football game. We know it's going to be physical. We know the Browns are going to bring it. They're going to bring that AFC North brand of football. But there is weather expected as well. Game time, it's expected to be around 40 degrees. There is a chance of precipitation. Excuse me. Winds will be swirling potentially. So you're going to have to buckle up your chin straps and be ready to battle out there if you're the Jaguars, you know, especially on the offensive line, defensive line, um, and all over the field. It's just going to be a a true battle out there to try to get a, a win, to try to get off the snide to try to erase the memory of that Monday night football debacle. We've got matchups to watch and bold predictions coming later in the week. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.